The last menu option is Synth, which is all the menus for controlling the sound to synthesizers and making synthesizer presets. Before getting into this, I'm going to load a seek file that contains one of each generator. By using this set of instruments, I can give some details on how the synthesizers work. So I created this one called uh, gen.seek. So I'm going to load that up right now. So as you can see, it has eight different tracks that are being triggered on every eighth step. And every track is muted except for the BAM zero generator. So uh, first of all, edit synth is used to access synthesizer parameters. So to get to edit synth, what you do is press start, press up to get to synth, and then press right to access the synth menus, and the first one is edit synth. Edit synth defaults to the track selected in the step sequencer. After selecting the track to modify, another menu pops up asking if you want to modify the generator, uh, FX, or N for output envelope. So if I select Edit Synth, now it's like BAM Zero. And um, because there's no effects associated with, with uh, the BAM Zero track, uh, the only options are Gen and N. So uh, before talking about the details about each of these generators and effects work, I want to cover how you control the parameters. In this example, let's uh, look at the gen parameters of the first track, uh, BAM0. So I'm going to select gen. After selecting gen, you'll see a list of parameters and values associated with these parameters. In some cases, these values are numbers, in other cases, they are words. To navigate the list, press the D-pad up or down. So I'm going to push the D-pad down, D-pad up, and the current uh, active uh, option is white. The basic controls for actually modifying parameters are the same as they are in the step sequencer when pressing triangle. Use the analog and digital pads to modify parameters. With the analog pad, you move it up and down to increase decrease values, or hold the left and right triggers to modify parameters at a very slow or very fast rate. So I'm going to go over the uh, SH1 parameter, and I'm going to press the analog pad. So, uh, so I'm modifying the SH1 parameter on uh, the current active step, which is uh, step 0 and track 0. So you can also uh, use the left and right triggers for modifying this parameter uh, more quickly or more slowly. So if I hold uh, left trigger while modifying this, I can, I can change the rate to, to slower, and by holding the right trigger I can make it much faster. So if you want to use the D-pad, then you need to hold either left or right triggers in order to modify parameters. Uh, on parameters like SH1 that have an integer value, if you use a left trigger in the D-pad, you can adjust the value by one up or down. So if I hold left trigger and push the D-pad up, you can see that I'm uh, very easily modifying this value by one at a time. So that's a very simple way to get uh, fine-grained control of integer values. Uh, So you can also step through uh, parameters that have a name uh, one at a time by using the digital pad. So I'm going to go to WT type 1, um, which is called saw, and then if I hold the left trigger and push up on the D-pad, I'm accessing each of these uh, parameters one by one. So, and then if you have a value that has a, uh, uh, a decimal point in it, using the digital pad adjusts uh, parameters by a small amount. So, holding the left trigger and pushing the digital pad up or down, you can see I'm changing it by 0 0.02. So this is the freak one parameter. If you want to change the parameters on another step in the current track, you press the analog pad left to right. So right now I'm on... Uh, step 0 and track 0. If I push the analog pad to the right, I'm now on step 8. And uh, you can tell because the x, uh, the value next to x in the bottom left hand side of the screen changed from 0 to 8. And also if you notice a couple of the parameters I changed in step 0 are now uh, different now that I moved to a new step. So again, I'll push to the left on the analog pad to go back to step 0. And you see some of those values are different. I'm pushing right, they're different again. So and this also loops around, so that way if, if you're on the last 
uh, triggered step in a, in a track. If you push right on the analog pad, you go to the first one. So if you want to um, reset a parameter value to its default value, you press the square button. So, uh, so the default value for Freak 1 in this case was 200, and uh, the default value for SH1 was 0. So there's also a few ways to modify all parameters in a loop at the same time. Uh, let's change the frequency value for each step in a loop. The frequency of a BAM generator is set by the Freak 1 parameter. First, let's set the frequency to a bunch of random values. So what I'm going to do is uh, go to set this value to, let's say, 230. Then I'll go to step 16, set it to 150. Go to step 40 and set it to, say, like, I don't know, 330. So now you can hear that the, the frequency is different for all these different sets. So if you hold triangle, while modifying a parameter. So hold triangle by using either the analog pad or the digital pad to change a parameter. You sync all of the uh, all the, uh, the values to the same amount. So if I hold triangle and push the analog pad up or down, now you can hear that every step has the same frequency and it was a frequency at step 40. And I can move it up and I can move it down, and, but every value remains the same. I'll also remember there's no way to do uh, undo in PSP6, so if you make a change to any value and you do it to all steps in a loop, uh, all that data is lost. Uh, another way to modify all parameters is by using the O button. Uh, so what I'm going to do is set some random frequency values again. So now we have some more random values. And if you hold O, um, what it does is it keeps the absolute difference between all of the uh, all the values the same, but it changes all of them at the same time. So if I hold O and push the uh, analog stick up, you can hear that the uh, the frequency curve remains the same. Um, but the entire uh, sequence was shifted up, and if I bring the frequency value down, you can hear how the curve uh, still remains, but now the frequency is much lower. There are a lot of useful applications for this function. Uh, one is if you want to create chords from multiple tracks. Uh, what you would do is copy either the frequency data, the generator data, or all the track data between two tracks, and then edit the frequency of the second track with the O button pressed. This keeps the original pitch contour intact, but moves the frequencies up or down, however many semitones you want. Also note that PSPC checks all parameters in a loop while in this mode to make sure that none go outside the minimum or maximum values. What this means is that you might be modifying a parameter and it gets stuck before it hits one of these extremes. This is because another parameter in a loop has already hit the extreme and it can't go any further, uh, freezing all other changes.